So welcome everyone to the StreamZ community meeting on May 30, 2024. So we have done the recording. Uh, anything to bring up at the beginning of the call before going through the usual agenda? It seems not. So uh, I just added one pull request here uh, about, yeah, sorry, someone to admit in the room. Okay. So I was saying, I just added one pull request here, uh, at least from what I so was kind of stuck. Uh, maybe that's for you, Lukash. I see that it's still in draft, some discussions going on. What's the, yes, and so, waiting of course for me for the review. So what's the status of this? Yeah, so uh, I was waiting for the 031 uh, Quotas plugin release and I pushed the, pushed the commit with the uh, fixes of few of the things. And I just need to uh, update the system tests before yeah, opening it uh, and asking for a new round of reviews. Okay, so the Quota plugin 031 is out, right? Yeah, so yeah, I added it uh, to the POMs and yeah, resolved some comments. So now it's just the system tests. So you are going to work on this around the STs and requesting new reviews. Okay, thank you, Lukas. Uh, yeah. Is there any other PR so issues that uh, other people would like to bring up, which are not here in the doc? If not, so we have a few proposal. Um, so the first one, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, new, I would say. So we have review only from Mikkel. So it's just a heads up for the others to, well, actually we had even reviews from Jakub. Um, so it's a heads up for the others, me included to take a look at this PR, unless there is anything that we want to discuss here from Kate. No, I think yeah, if anyone can have a look, particularly um, we're having a discussion about whether the um, kind of added complexity of adding support for this outweighs the um, use. So if there's anyone in the community who has a real need for offset management through the Kafka connector CRs, then we'd love to hear from you. Okay, thank you. The next one. Yeah, again, it's another PR which needs more reviews. I see some discussion with Tom and Jakub. I had to, um, to have a pass on it because I was busy on something different these weeks. So again, an heads up for the others to take a look to this PR. And this one, yeah, this one was kind of more a question on my side, maybe yeah, for Jakub or Kate. Uh, because I, I went through the proposal, uh, I also read the discussion and it seems that there could be some overlapping with the work that you are doing, Kate. So it's this proposal actually still in place or should we close it or waiting for your work or we can uh, stay with this proposal to be open? I think for me, the so I think where it overlaps with the certificate work is what I've sort of said there in terms of um if we wanted to support using cert manager then you can specify the key algorithm and the size but i don't think that you can specify the hashing algorithm so it was just a question of whether we want to include support for that or whether we want to 
do some sort of thing similar to cert manager where we infer it based on the key algorithm size i mean we could just say actually when we support cert manager that that option's not supported or something but um so if i got it right uh so let's uh, think about we 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 don't have today search manager integration, right? So, and yeah. we are going, I don't know, to accept this proposal, to implement this proposal, uh, and uh, you can specify the algorithm this way. Then when we have your work in place and implemented with the search manager uh, support, we are going to miss this uh, feature. Yeah, so I think the implication is that I don't know enough about the combinations of um options so my worry is the risk is that you would specify a key algorithm size and then the hashing algorithm if you then changed and said actually i'm gonna let cert manager issue the certificates could you end up in a position where the hashing algorithm is not what you intended because cert manager is inferring it differently it might be that actually once you've chosen the key algorithm and size, then there's only a certain number, like there's, that would infer the correct hashing algorithm anyway. But yeah, that's my lack of understanding of the, the options for these three things. So yeah, at this point I was just wondering, and maybe other, uh, others have a different opinions, if it's uh, worth to, to move on with this proposal, if we, we have uh, this kind of uh, possibility that we are going to miss this feature when moving to search manager or we should investigate more on search manager to see if it's possible to have the same or i, I don't know if it's worth including this feature now and then uh, you know ending up in the situation that, that kate just explained and I, I think the the thing we are still missing from the person who raised the issue is the like a list of kind of supported values um and i think that would help answer the question about cert manager so what are the combinations of values that are going to be acceptable to strimzy which is also related to fips uh so not all algorithms are valid for fips so we should also think about this and it's one of the points that Diapo raised. So maybe Kate, are you going to ask this question to on the on the PR? If yeah. that's useful to you for the your work that you're doing on search manager side? Yeah, I mean I can prompt again for the the list of, of values. As it, so on like three weeks ago he said that he would um answer some of the concerns in the proposal, but as far as I know it hasn't had an update since then. No, yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, my only concern is that uh, if we want to have this, uh, we should, uh, yeah, we should reasoning about missing something when search manager or not having at all. Yeah. That's the, yeah, yeah that's I'll, the, um, my, my I, point. I can respond on the issue and, and see if they've had any time to think about what their support values will be. Okay. Thank you, Kate. If nothing more on this, uh, um, the last one, I guess it was not me adding this one. It was Shubham. We have Shubham on the call. I cannot see the list of people when sharing, or at least I'm not good at No, it. I don't think, I don't think he's here. Okay. I can see the list. Yeah. Shubham is not here. So I would say that Shubham maybe is, uh, is looking for more comments. Uh, he tagged me and Tom a couple of times after the latest comment from Jakub. And uh, again, I had no time to review this PR, so I should go and review. I guess that's the same for you, Tom, right? Yeah, I'll take a note to look at this hopefully tomorrow. Okay, thank you.
And uh, yeah, there are no more proposals at least to discuss. If anyone has any other proposal to bring up, it's not on the dock. Seems not, so let's move to our preferred section, the issue triage. So the first issue, it was raised by Marosh. Seems to be some performance scaling issue on craft-based cluster. But following the discussion, it seems in the end that there is identified a bug upstream in Kafka raised by Luke. So I see that this bug is still open, not fixed, but it's targeted for 3.8. So I yeah, guess... I will push... I will yeah, go on, Luke, in. sorry. Yeah, I will push this into 3871 and 380. Okay, so I guess that uh, uh, this issue is still in place and uh, we are waiting for the Kafka issue to be fixed in order to move on. So I will take this open, of course. Is that okay with you, Marosh? Yes. So let's see. Triaged on. Something like this. Yeah, it looks good to me. It's good. Okay, at this point, I don't think that this needs another triage. So we are working on it. So Luke on Kafka side and then Marosh will work on, well, we will work when the Kafka one is, is fixed. So this one is about um, yeah, the Kafka rebalance reconciliation gets stuck if something happened to the cruise control pod. I guess uh, in this case, it was just restarted because some scaling up, but it could happen even if you kill just the cruise control pod. And uh, the user is reporting that the reconciliation of the Kafka rebalance is stuck, which should not happen. As far as I can see, Shubham was trying to reproduce this but uh, he was not able to reproduce. And also Federico mentioned that this kind of situation are already handled in the, in the topic operator. Uh, because if you restart the cruise control, the task list is just empty. So there is no kind of history or it's not stateful somehow. So you have to kind of, to kind of uh, reissue the request to cruise control when it restarts. So I would say that, yeah, Shubham was not able, is not here, was not able to reproduce, but I think that, uh, yeah, the first step is try to reproduce uh, the issue on our side. Yeah, exactly. So in my comment, I'm just explaining how we address it in the topic operator. Basically, you have some cruise control generated task ID. So that cruise control sent to you at some point. And when you ask for the status with this ID and it returns an empty list, then you know that, okay, we are in a situation where cruise control restarts for some reason or crashed or something. And we need to resend all the ongoing tasks. So the tasks that we know that were previously sent to cruise control. So, so that's the logic. So that we need to also apply to Kafka rebalance. Yeah, so right now what we have in the Kafka rebalance assembly operator is that, uh, yeah, we issue the request, we get the user task, the user task is in the status of the Kafka rebalance. And uh, on the next reconciliations, right, you are going to ask to cruise control, uh, what's the status of this yes. task? Yeah, yeah, issuing the user task ID. Um, yeah, 
it's interesting that uh, if you maybe in this case issuing the request it's getting uh, that there is kind of no status for that for that user task id and um, yeah we are not handling properly this situation but uh, in the topic operator the task id's list is taken in memory right so if the topic operator restarts no. what happen no no it's, it's in the um, in the topic kafka topic status so you have ah, it okay can be recovered yeah Okay, so first of all, we need uh, to reproduce this. Um, so I would say I'm going to tag again Shubham. Uh, Yeah, yeah. As as you also suggested, there is no need to exactly apply the reproducer because if you just trigger a rebalance and then kill cruise control pod, you should get the, the issue yeah, much much easier. Yeah. Yeah, let's say that uh, I will ping Shubham. Uh, well, I just targeted him. Uh, and um, yeah, maybe try to understand what he did, try to reproduce and see what happened. And if, uh, yeah, there is something missing and we should reproduce it and fix. Sounds good. So. The next one, Kafka rebalance not respecting replication throttle. Yeah, it seems that this folk was running uh, the, the, um, the rebalancing, specify some throttle, but it was not, um, yeah, it, it was actually not working. So even going above the throttling threshold. I still saw your comment, Federico, right? Yeah. You have yeah, a so, work around this. Yeah, so this is a duplicate of another issue we, we have, 9972, uh, which basically the, the, the topic of error here is removing these throttle configurations because they are not in this the spec of the topic. Uh, they are added dynamically by cruise control, so the topic of error needs, needs to ignore them when the cruise control integration is enabled. Um, in this original issue, there is a workaround, which is not really great, but it works. Another way to, to make it work is to temporarily stop the topic operator, but we need a proper fix. And there is a user which uh, offered to implement this, but now it's three weeks, so maybe I can uh, try to ask uh, if he needs any help or what's the, the status of this. Yeah, so my take on this is that uh, maybe we can close this as a, a duplicate of 1997 uh, and maybe you can get back to 9972 yes. pinging the user, as you mentioned. Yes, right. What's the user raising? I am right that if the user is not interested to fix, uh, you are going to take care of this? Yes, yes, sure. Thank you, Fede. Sorry for yeah throwing you under the bus. No, 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 no problem. I already had a look at it. So, so something like this, right? Yes.
Okay, let's refresh a little bit. This one, as far as I can see, there is a PR open for this, right? Yes, uh, so it should be good. Uh, I see that also system tests were uh, good. So I think it should be ready. It's just adding these two uh, additional metrics for quiz control requests, which are disabled by default also. So you need to enable them explicitly. Okay, yeah, this is the, the issue where um, the PR we were discussing about use of our on the on yes, the PR. yes, but anyway, yeah, that's not the place I think that we can should keep the discussion. I mean, the PR is approved, is fine. Uh, I guess that we can merge it, uh, and then uh, yeah, we will talk about using of our even offline, yeah, yes, sure. So So we can just close the one. Yeah, I'm going to merge the PR right after the call. Uh, did you run any regression already? Well, not you. Yes, Jakub. Yeah. And everything is green. Okay. Support oops. publish not read the address attribute in service with type node port. So I'm not really familiar with this, to be honest. I already read this discussion, this this issue. It seems that We are supporting this with this annotation, but now something is changed in the latest Kubernetes version. Yeah, now no, it's deprecated, so we should provide the alternative way of doing this, which is a new property in the spec. Ah, okay. So it sounds like something that we should support because it's something that we already have today by annotation, but we have a deprecation mm -hmm. in Kubernetes and we need another way. So any other opinion that we should keep this open and um, maybe to fix this? I think you need to think about where should it be configured and how. So it sounds like something like a proposal. Not necessarily, but they probably need to configure it on the listener level. In the listener configuration. And... Uh... Do we want to ask the user if he's interested to work on this or, uh, I don't know, help wanted? I think I'm it's a good, I think it's a good start. It's even a good start. Okay. Yeah, me too. Could start and even help wanted at this point. Okay. Next one. Ability to fully configure controller and replication listener, able to support plain text and SASL plain text. So I went through this and I saw that, yeah, Jakub, you already had some. Um... This should be closed, it's duplicate to the other issue I linked there. This two, one? Two, six, six. No. Oh, sorry. Yes, this one, 2266. 
Ah, okay, but the user is thinking about providing a proposal, right? I mean, that's fine, and I reply to the ideas he had, but we should not have two issues to track the same thing regardless. Yes, you're right. Something like this. Sounds good. Okay. Switch the user operator reconciliation interval second to int in version one. So, okay, if I, you open this one, I guess that we should take this open, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is just to align the spec parts uh, between user and topic operator because now one is long, the other is int. Int is fine because we are dealing with seconds here. Uh, so just just to align them, but we cannot do it right now because of the implication with backward compatibility. To be uh, honest, I think we should a consider whether this is technically feasible, and b I don't really get why you open the issue for this and not for changing the fields to milliseconds, because that from your description that was the mistake you actually did in the first place. No, so so my the PR that I opened was about uh, moving the, the implementation from int to long because there we were using milliseconds. So long is more appropriate, let me say, for milliseconds. Uh, but then I also saw that the spec was disaligned between topic operator and user operator for the same field, so reconciliation interval in seconds. And then that's why I then open on this one. Yeah, but you started with saying that you copied the millisecond field from the other configurations. Yes. Then the that's second what... configuration here. So that's why yes. I'm saying whether it doesn't make more sense to instead migrate to millisecond fields used elsewhere from the second fields used here. Uh, so you, you mean switching the spec to milliseconds? That's what you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah so I agree with that. Uh, yeah, so that mistake, I think it could be common because we have milliseconds in many places and I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not against that idea. Uh, I don't know if you want to maybe close this one and reopen another one. Yeah, sorry, I was talking, it, but I didn't realize I was on mute. So yes, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, uh, because we are going, it seems that we agree on going on the other direction to switch on millisecond instead of switching the user operator to use uh, any, but still in seconds, right? Yeah, also the, so the environment variable is in milliseconds. So there is kind of mismatch between these two uh, things that, that can create confusion, like in my case, when I was testing. So I agree. Okay, so it seems we agree on closing this one and uh, Fede, you are going to open a new one. Okay, okay. basically similar, so to align the two specs, but uh, using milliseconds. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah.
And the last one, the last one, yeah, I saw that you, Jacob, already opened a PR. It was reviewed by me and uh, the other Paolo, Jacob. Just, just, just a comment, Paolo. When you are closing the issues as rejected, you have to close them as not planned, not as completed now. Uh, you mean the previous one? Yeah. I don't know if you can change it, but for the next time, at least. As a, so that Let you know. See you. Maybe I can yeah, you can you can change it. You could have just selected. Ah, okay. But, uh, yes. So did I make the same mistake but for the others? You, you, have, you have to press the button, I guess. Sorry, thank you, Jakub. So I will go through the others and see if I have made the same mistake for the one not planned. Uh, I will do right after the call. Um, what was the last one? Sorry, this one it's going to be merged. Yes, this one. Uh, yeah, I see that we already have the fix, right, Jakub, from you. Uh, there is a PR reviewed by me and the other Jakub. So I guess that we can uh, just remove the needs triage and this one yeah. will be closed soon. Yeah. Okay. And we are at the end of the issue triage. Any other business to raise up before I start with the, the couple of them or the three of them that we have right now? There is a new one. So let me go through this list. The first one is about StreamZicon, just uh, saying that we have the recordings available. Uh, they are available to this link, which should be, yes, the, the StreamZ YouTube channel. Uh, while they are even available on the official CNCF YouTube channel, which is great. So if you missed some of the sessions because you were on the other track, because we had to parallel track or we totally missed the conference, uh, I guess that it's worth wa watching the recordings. Um, so um, there is a discussion in the... Um, uh where uh, yeah we would like to try to rotate uh hosting the community call across the maintainers so as you can see most of the times it was jakub uh it was me when jakub was not there today jakub is here but i am hosting and leading the call so um i guess that we should try to share leading the the community goal and preparing the community goal because i can totally understand that uh it's a lot of work that should be done around you know going through the prs the issues and um yeah adding them to the agenda uh what are the ones which make sense to discuss and so on going through the issue triage be prepared for discussing the issues um so I would like to have from the other maintainers where possible the availability of uh, running the call in a kind of rotating way. I can even do even the next one. It's not needed that in two weeks we will have another one. But yeah, not just having me and you at this point, uh, me and Jakub at this point hosting, but even the others. So just saying that, not sure if uh, maintainers have any comments on this. Seems not, but hopefully people will ping me to host the next one. Say that the last one, which I totally guess in here, but it should be Lukas, right? To add the canary. Subject. Yeah, we we wanted to discuss the future of the canary uh, last time on the community call, but we were missing uh, Tom B. So I guess we can discuss it now if we have the time. Because from the community chat and also some issues, I saw that uh, yeah, the canary is used uh, by some users and they are asking for some updates and. Uh, 
yeah, if there will be some new version of Canary or what is the future, so it will be maybe uh, better to discuss it now and do some decision if we can, I don't know, archive the project or create a proposal for enhancing it and maybe rewriting it to Java as I have the POC. And yeah, I'm curious about the thoughts of others. What do you think about it? So my side, yes, I can confirm that uh, two or three people, or so even more, uh, were, uh, I don't know, updating, for example, the Go version in the project and uh, asking, not asking for new features or for bug fixes, but at least upgrading the Go version and then asking for a new release with this new Go version. Uh, because it's something that we are not updating or working on it for a long time. Uh, I was the one who started this project. Um, and I, yeah, I'm not sure we want to still maintain the project. So as you mentioned, Lukas, on one side, so we can have an extra release just because of the latest Go update. Uh, I can run a release, but then uh, uh, I think that uh, we should take, uh, we should come back to the proposal that you or maybe Tom started uh, and discuss there maybe the future of the canary, uh, what's the purpose, what's the goal, and then uh, yeah, deciding maybe to move to Java because you know our uh, knowledge across the team is more about Java in the community more or less still Java. Uh, instead of having this Golang project still uh, around. Yeah, I mean, um, I think probably the simplest thing to do uh, for, you know, now, Paolo, is, as you say, to um, at least do a release of an updated Go Canary. Um, that would at least keep those users um, happy for the, the time being. Um, and on the the possibility of rewriting it, then you know if if someone's you know sort of willing to to do that and drive it, you know it's effectively it's a code contribution like any other, and you know we can review it if you know if, if the contribution is going to be forthcoming i've got no objection to that well we we already have something from lukash right lukash we have a poc that you could yeah. kind of trying to donate or open a pr in order to to have a review on it yeah so well, what basically... is the expected value from just rewriting it into the current language well, the rational, uh, we have a proposal for that, but one of the reasons uh, was, for example, as far as I remember, the fact that in Go you are using this Arama library, which is not uh, almost aligned with the latest shiny features coming from Kafka, where <coughs> the, Kafka Java one, uh, the Kafka Java client is the official one. And if you have, I don't know, any bugs or stuff, you don't have to go into Sarama, fix stuff in Sarama, and then back to the Canary while uh, with the Kafka Java one, uh, you already have, you know, fix it by the community or anyway, taking into account the knowledge of Java, maybe we, it's easy for us to fix that in the Kafka Java client instead of fixing in Sarama. Isn't the Canary supposed to do some pretty basic stuff around sending and receiving messages and not something complicated using some hot new features? Well, it was actually doing some reassignments of the partition for the logic that uh, it had. So as far as I remember, there was something missing in the admin client in Sarama that was useful. I don't remember the detail, to be honest, off the top of my head. But it was missing in Sarama and, uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, it was already available in the Java one. Also bugs, if something, I don't know, it's going wrong in Sarama even on the producer and consumer side. That was one of the reason, but I guess that the other one should be in the proposal. Yeah, so I could... we... Sorry, Likash, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, for what it's worth having used the Sarama client before, we've um, I've definitely seen in the past it's had like a memory leak, for example, in the producer client. Just as anecdotal evidence of, um, yeah. But these bugs wouldn't bugs. seem to be um, affecting the people that are using the canary at the moment. No, I well, think this is not right now. So at least they are not reporting bugs or issue of this type. Yes, yeah, sorry, Kate. Yeah, I was going to say it wasn't that noticeable unless you were running multi like lots and lots of producer clients at the same time, which I don't think we're doing in the Canary. But it's yeah, I, I guess it, the point is that there clearly are some um, bugs in not just the more edge cases, but some of the more mainstream parts of Swarm that I've seen anyway. I think the good question is also, we, we have like four or five users, at least uh, as far as I understand from the conversation, so does it even make sense to rewrite it, uh, spend time with uh, new releases, any new features, uh, do some additional support of it instead of invest this time into more critical stuff around the operator or other stuff? Yeah, the only concern, so I can totally understand that, of course, rewriting from scratch is a huge work, even if we have something from Lucas shown ready. The only concern is that when someone will come with some uh, nasty bug or tricky bug in maybe in Sarama, we are going to spend some time on this Golang project, or even not just in the canary itself, but even within Sarama in order to fix it in Sarama or adding new stuff in Sarama and then <clears throat> releasing a new canary with the fix. Uh, this is my only big concern about having the canary still in place. Yeah, but you're talking about weighing a hypothetical bug in the canary, which might never happen. Yeah. Against, you know, all the work to rewrite, review, release a new version of the Canary in Java, which are you, I mean, that's going to have bugs in as we go through that process that probably need to be ironed out. So. No, yeah, it's totally and understandable. It's also and not like the Kafka clients don't have any bugs, right? Like the Kafka quality seems to be going down lately as well. Yeah, but Sarama, at least in my previous experience, is not able to keep the pace. So, I mean, when you have something in the Java client, uh, the same feature maybe is available in Sarama weeks or months later. Of course, if you need that, maybe we don't need something new in the Canary because it's a really simple application. My, my only question for you, maybe Tom, or for the others, it's what are we going to answer a user facing a bug and then we realize that this bug is not that tricky to fix, you have to go to Sarama, investigate in Sarama, wasting time on Sarama before fixing, or we are going to say, we don't want to fix this. Because it's, you know, we don't have the time, we don't have the workload to investigate and fix something in Sarama. Of course, it's all, all so it's all hypothetical because we don't know. Maybe just these three or four users are using uh, Canary and they are just happy with having a new release with the new Golang version. We can even stay as I we mean, are today. Paolo, there are plenty of issues in the Canary repository without any replies and so on. So why are you worried that suddenly when someone reports a bug, you have to jump in and start fixing it? Like we are not even bothering to answer issues, right? Or give some basic reply. Yeah, which is not that great from a community perspective and maybe shame on me, you're not doing that. 
but yeah, because I don't see Canary right now as a higher priority, at least for me, because I was the one developing this. So it even comes to the idea mentioned by Lukas at the beginning, if we should just archive this project. I think that's fine for me, but I never worked on it, so. To be honest, one of the main issues for the canary for me was that I don't think it was written really as a user-friendly tool. It gives away all kinds of metrics and it has probably some sophisticated logic inside. But as a user, I would be more interested in getting the single number showing some availability or something and that doesn't seem to be what it offers. So it's maybe a great tool for great experts who understand what exactly it does. So here's the question, what are we going to do? I don't think that we agree on any final decision. Just stick with the canary in Go, but taking into account that not all the issues will be addressed or answered as already happened today, but maybe having another release or uh, archiving, because it seems that the rewriting uh, in Java is off the table. At least it's my feeling. Like for the Go uh, implementation, I would maybe archive it because it's two years without, almost two years without any updates. And in case that we would like to yeah, implement it in Java, I guess, as Jakub mentioned on the proposal, we should really think about having some better metrics about the availability stuff. And that's kind of not uh, compatible with the initial idea of the canary. So maybe archiving the Go, Go implementation, creating proposal for that. And then maybe if the users would like to have the canary there, create a proposal for writing it in Java with some proper metrics would make sense to me. Yeah, I can see that there's some value in doing that. It would provide a, a good opportunity to understand what people actually want from it and uh, um, drop any functionality that's not actually needed, which would you know, be a simpler thing if that um, Java version came to pass. And if nobody complains or is you know prepared to describe what they want then we just assume that there's actually no demand for it not enough demand you know for people to you know even bother to describe what it is that they want so that works for me Lukash if it works for you yeah and also for the Java implementation or the POC I have there were a few things which weren't uh, possible with the uh... Java Kafka clients because the Serama clients have some kind of uh, communication with uh, Kafka on some lower level uh, available for the users than the Java clients have. So, yeah, for example, the connection check wasn't, or I wasn't able to implement it because it's not quite possible. So, yeah, it's completely different canary than the canary in go right so it sounds like that uh, so tom if i got you right you are even agreement on uh, archiving it having a proposal for archiving and if anyone is interested they can come and open a new one for writing in java yeah i mean it would certainly precipitate a conversation about you know what the future should be where we'd have actual users present you know explaining what it was that they wanted whereas at the moment like half the problem seems to be you know we don't know how many users there are we don't know how well the existing canary is actually serving you know their needs 
we just know that it's you know a a thing that you know we don't particularly want to support in these circumstances where we don't know how useful it actually is for people Okay, any other opinions? Yeah, if not, uh, you can see on the doc, I tried to summarize the kind of agreement we reached. Uh, yeah, I will try to, to, to write a proposal to archive the Canary project so that we can have a vote on the proposal, archive the project and yeah, and follow what Tom just said. I can write a proposal if it helps. Okay. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lukash. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so any other business? If not, thank you very much for everyone who joined today. See you next time. Thanks, bye. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye.